Anyway, hi, I'm Barbara Tracy, and I work at Education Development Center, a large nonprofit based in Massachusetts. Glenn was the one who hired me there a long time ago, and um, now he's here in North Carolina, but I've worked with Glenn and Monica for a number of years in the online learning program that I direct at Tech Leaders Online, which is a national capacity building online learning program where we work with state departments of ed, school districts, colleges and universities, projects like New Schools Project to help them build online learning program that meet their needs. So I love the questions that were posed for us today about virtual communities and technology and how that could help improve education. I knew we had a short time and even though I'm from Massachusetts and I can talk fast, I decided let me get the key ideas out here right at the beginning just in case I run out of time. Um, several key points I'm going to talk about with some stories and some examples. One, online professional development can improve STEM learning. We have research. I'm going to talk about a big research project. Two, I love, like I said, your question about virtual communities. What we've been doing for the past 12 years as we've been working in online professional development, Centerfold has been the learning community model, facilitated online communities, formal and informal. Three, we've talked about this a lot today, empowering teachers to create content. We do that to create and share content improves the way they teach. And fourth, there are scalable models that technology and online learning enable. Okay, so my first story, and I have three daughters, so I have to warn you, there's gonna be three stories that relate to each daughter. First one, this is, this is um, Becky, my middle daughter, actually in the 90s. She's now 29, she's, um, but this is her in sixth grade. And it was a Sunday night in sixth grade, and we said, did you do your homework? And she said, yeah, all I had to do is, you know, the teacher said we're gonna start a new unit on the solar system, and we had to write a paragraph about why there are an extra four minutes a day. So she said, I'm done, I put it away. I said, well, let me just take a look. She's, you know, sometimes has grammatical problems. I said, let me just look at it. I'll read over your paragraph. Look fine to me. She put it away. Her father said, hold on a second. I want to look at it. He reads, the, he reads the story. She had, you know, written her paragraph about leap year. And he said, wait a second. Four minutes a day is not going to account for one day every four years. Four minutes a day is actually one day a year. So he said, it's not leap year. So this was the 90s. He was actually already on the internet, and uh, it was pre-browser, but he decided he would search for some astronomy listservs and science teacher listservs and see if he could find out what the four minutes a day was. Sure enough, this is a chart, which I actually just pulled off Wikipedia, which was not available then, but the answer to the question is actually something called sidereal day, which I have now studied it in preparation for this. We're not gonna get sidetracked, but it's actually fascinating. But we were getting answers all through the night, within an hour, and then they kept coming, and this is Sunday night, explaining that sidereal day and leap year are actually often confused, especially by high school and middle school teachers if they try to address it, but they explain the difference. We pulled our daughter aside and said, okay, look, here, here it is. You don't want to get the wrong answer. You know, study this. We helped her de decipher it. She rewrote her paragraph, takes it into school. I see her after school on that Monday, and I said, well, how did it go? She said, thanks a lot. I'm the only one who got it wrong. Everybody else got leap year. I'm the only one. I got a zero for it. So I said, no, wait a second. Stuff had been coming in all day long from the astronomy, you know, all around the world. So we had a stack of printouts. I said, bring this into the teacher. You know, he has to know. I'm over it. She said, I'm done. We've already <laughs> moved on. It did turn out, though, that that Thursday happened to be meet the teacher night. This was the beginning of the school year. So we had piles of stuff. I brought it in. I said, you know, I'm really worried. Um, I just, just want to show you, you know, this is where this all came from. And the teacher did say, okay, he understood that he had mixed it up and he was going to explain it to the rest of the class, so we felt good. But this was the beginning. It was actually the beginning of what made me decide I had to learn more about technology and online learning and get professional development into my very under-resourced district where my kids were going to school. Okay, second story. Um, this, is, this is a recent picture of my youngest daughter who is now a spe special ed student teacher 
severe special ed. And I, last week I was telling her that I'm working on this presentation. I told her Becky's story. And she said, guess what happened in class today? She walked into class. There's only seven severe special ed students in the class. The teacher was going to start a science lesson with them. This is K through 2. And so she asked the class, what lives in ponds? So one little boy raises his hand and says, dinosaur fish. Well, Becky and Patty, the teacher, look at each other. We never heard of dinosaur fish. They did know Connor, the little boy, watched the Discovery Channel with his father all the time. Yes, the Discovery Channel. So, um, so they thought this could, you know, this kid could know what he's talking about. Well, this is a very well-resourced school. They went to one of the computers that were connected to the internet in the back of the classroom, the whole group, the teacher and all seven students and my daughter and the other aides, and they started looking up dinosaur fish and fresh water. And sure enough, this is one of the pictures that they pulled off. There's also a Wikipedia entrance. So here's an example where, and we talked about this a lot of the presentations and the conversation, talked about technology was enabling the teachers and the students to learn together. It was changing the balance in the classroom. So I go back to the National Ed Tech Plan. You know, it's now going on two years old. We're waiting to see the whole reality actually happen in schools and districts across the country. But it points to connected teaching and how that's really going to help change the teaching force and help teachers like the two examples that, that we just talked about and prepare them for the kind of connected learning their students are doing. So here's, here's my last story. This is my granddaughter that is, um, this was before she turned one. She's now past one, my oldest daughter's daughter. So her great-grandparents live in Hawaii, my daughter's grandparents. So this is a picture of Jacqueline when she came over and, my, and our, her, um, we realized she's here at the Sunday afternoon. Let's teach her great-grandparents, you know, my daughter's grandparents, to video iChat so that they don't have to miss their great-granddaughter growing up. So here's a picture of her. She was a 10 or years old. She's sitting there video eye chatting with her great-grandparents, who we taught to change how they communicate with her. And it's just sitting there thinking, OK, today's teachers are going to be teaching kids who grew up before they were one experiencing video eye chatting and that kind of communication. So what do we have to do to prepare today's teaching force for those students? I love this quote from Alvin Toffler, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, or relearn. We've talked about, and relearn, we've talked about we're not just layering stuff on. If teacher, teachers have to know how to teach differently and teach with the tools, the new tools that we have, and also learn with those tools. I think Glenn mentioned teachers teach as they were taught. So we have to start teaching teachers differently, change the paradigm of professional development if they're going to be able to teach the students like we've been looking at today. Monica mentioned National Staff Development Council. We've been working on professional development. We're talking about a professional development challenge. Go back to the core principles of what's, what's effective professional development as we build our virtual or our online professional development programs. The core principles have to still apply, but you have to think about how they apply in the online environment. And what we've been finding is that you can do all of these core principles. You can address them in the online environment. And in some cases, you can actually do it better because of the learning communities that you can build, which is one of your questions. Because it's extended over time, you can make classroom projects. You can teach teachers to design things, test them on in their classroom, talk about it with other teachers. So I'm going to tell you two quick examples of how we did this. The first is e-learning for educators. It was a large 10-state capacity building online professional development program with funded by the US Department of Ed. North Carolina actually joined the project with another state. It was originally eight. We were able to bring North Carolina in in the last two years. Missouri was in it from the beginning. There's some great stories from what each of those states have accomplished with it. I'm going to show you one story from Delaware. But we 
built unique statewide online professional development programs in each of the states providing, okay, I gotta go faster. Um, using the learning community model, there was one thing I wanna tell you is there was a core research project where teachers took a series of 90 hours of online professional development in math and in English language arts in two different grade levels. It showed significant impact of the teachers who took the professional development on both their content knowledge, their teaching practices, and on student learning. So we have research to show that this kind of learning community model works. Here's an example of how we trained the facilitators, local facilitators in each state, thinking about, and this was just a random conversation. Here's an example, I'm trying to go quickly, of one of the math courses that was used in the research. These are the topics. This is the kind of thing, if we opened it up, you'd see the research, the activities, and the online discussions that teachers are having over a period of seven weeks. We also trained states to develop their own content to meet their needs. We provided some, some content across all of the states. Delaware had a new state initiative, middle school initiative in science, that all of the teachers were gonna get science kits, and they had required training in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade to learn to use these science kits in different topics. They decided to use the program, work together, take teachers to develop exemplary teachers video themselves teaching, and create the content and the training to scale this training statewide. And it was very effective. Second example, oh good, I'm gonna to get to it. Second example is we're working with a consortium outside of the Boston area of 18 school districts that have come together to build virtual courses for their students and share the courses, share the development, share the students. They wanted to get into digital learning, same kinds of questions as you're asking yourselves. Many of their courses were science and math courses. Here's an example of a teacher created AP environmental science course. I took this slide. This is where they were two weeks ago. This is the conversation, the online conversation with the students. When we train the teachers to develop their content, they said over and over again, I'm a better classroom teacher because I have learned and taken the time to recreate my content online and collaboratively. And by the same token, the online facilitators that we train said that when we're teaching them the inquiry-based approaches that they need in order to facilitate an online discussion, in order to draw out deep reflection and thoughtfulness, they take those into their day job, into their on the ground bricks and mortar classroom. And they said, these are the kind of inquiry based strategies that we need to be using today that we didn't learn in pre service, that we're not getting from any other professional development program, but the skills to facilitate a virtual community is helping them in their day jobs. So, oh, good, I got to the end. These are the things we just talked about. Online learning can improve STEM education with project-based, inquiry-based courses. It can accelerate with the virtual communities and, and is, is something that is so central, but it takes training and it takes time to make them work. You can change teachers' practice when you empower them to create content. Glenn was talking about that too with the videos. Technology allows teachers to be co-learners with their students. Several of us have talked about that. And it can enable scalable models. Think about the Delaware case. Think about 10 states that built unique statewide programs. So I'm done. Um, this, is, this is just a quote from one of the other states. West Virginia was part of it. This was someone, Joanne was someone who was, went through training to learn to facilitate and learn to design courses. There was more to this. This was something that she had actually just posted in the end of her training when she was, went, had designed a course. And she realized that teachers across West Virginia were gonna be taking a course that she worked hard on, that she researched, that she wrote, and they were gonna be getting graduate credit from because they had built a partnership with partner universities. And she just felt the power of being an online educator was bringing her and her students and her school and her state into the 21st century.